we all know Debian 12 is absolutely positively, without question, the best distribution created in the history of ever. Hey everybody, welcome back to Linux Weekly, daily Wednesdays where we sit back, relax, take that midweek break, talk about some of the fun things going on in the world of Linux and open source. I'm Vin, that's Joe. We're just talking to the pre-show about how do we keep our notes in order when you're on that long project of trying to fix something. And, you know, well, admittedly, some of us, myself included, we forget to take notes sometimes and you end up having to do double work trying to figure out what was that one thing that you fixed <laughs> in that <Yeah. laughs> chain that made it work. But we got a pretty, pretty nice little show for you today. We're going to be talking about the Framework 13 updates. Uh, I got the Elite Desk right up done. And of course, trying to use a tablet for doing the graphic drawings mm -hmm. on Wayland. There might be a problem with it. But before we get into that, we like to play a little bit of catch up. Not mustard in Jill's case. Jill's not a fan. I only catch up. No. <laughs> mustard doesn't have enough sugar in it, is my <laughs> suspicion of what's going on, what's new in your life, Jill. What do you got going on over there in uh, oh. Los Angeles? Aw. Well, I've actually been enjoying the coverage from Computex 2024, which is in Taipei, Taiwan, this week. And it's the biggest computing event of the year. It's just gotten huge over the years. For us uh, com computer nerds, it's, there's more stuff there than for CES for us. <laughs> the, that's where uh, the innovation in computers, uh, where, where you hear about it and where you see it. And uh, I had fun watching AMD's keynote by AMD CEO, Dr. Lisa Su, who's one of my heroes. And she kicked off the event Sunday evening. And she unveiled the new AMD Ryzen 9 9950X processor, which is the world's fastest consumer desktop processor, featuring 16 CPU cores and a speedy 5.7 gigahertz maximum boost frequency. <laughs> it was pretty sweet. I want to get my hands on one of those soon. <laughs> Should be a fun time. I mean, it's always fun to watch, uh, you know, with the time thing. I have had an opportunity to catch a lot more of that show. I think a lot of people, because I'm up at two o'clock in the morning. Oh yeah. Yeah. And, that does help. Yeah. I see the live streams <laughs> pop on. I watched to try to watch a little bit about NVIDIA thing. And like, I'm like, man, yeah. I'm AI'd out. I am so AI'd out. <laughs> That's lots, uh, lots of AI. Yeah, one of the reasons we will not be covering the Raspberry Pi AI hat that was yeah. released this week. I'm like, I'm sorry, Raspberry Pi. Yeah. I don't care, man. <laughs> fun I know that. we're all burnt out. I mean, AMD had um, a lot of, uh, obviously, it was focused on AI yeah, as well. Yeah, like their chips have like AI. I'm like, yeah. Oh, no. Yeah. All right, fine. But it you know what? What's different is Lisa Sue, she does such a good job at explaining it. So even someone who is a layman watching it, who doesn't understand, can, you know, understand some of it. She's just very good about, about that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, you can be an excellent salesman. It's still AI at the end of the day. Like, whatever. It's marketing <laughs> yes. buzzword. It's, I, I, I saw that floating around on social media. It's like a bunch of engineers and scientists have trained uh, computers to come up with a wildly inaccurate uh, guesswork. And everyone's yeah. rushing to push that into their own product. And I'm like, that's kind of where yeah. we're at right now with it. Except for the Windows thing, right? And the Windows snapshot. Oh, we gosh. talked about that last Windows week. Recall. Yeah. Go back and watch <laughs> that one. What have I been up to? Always on the lookout for audio stuff yes, and Linux. That has been uh, a big focus for mine because it's such a great vector to get people to come over to the Linux side because they got expensive hardware that just works. And, uh, you know, you get things like Windows 11 rolling out or you get the new Mac, the ARM powered Macs, and all of a sudden their twelve, thirteen thousand dollars $13,000 setup no longer works. And they're like, I don't want to get rid of this. Uh, so what yeah. do I do? And they start looking around for options. And that's when they run into your friendly neighborhood old man, Vin. Yes. Like, hey, guys, let's <laughs> see. You know, and they are motivated. And you're dealing with, especially with like recording engineers, because, hey, man, they like to figure stuff out. So Linux is not that big of a stretch for a lot of them, you know, because eh, they're recording engineers. Oh, I always keep an eye out for. PCI Express sound cards. That sounds uh, crazy in modern times because you get the USB DAC, you plug it in, you're good to go. These people need more than that. I even need more than that. I have a PCI Express sound card. It's not even, we're stretching the term sound card here. More mm -hmm. like a format converter. 
And traditionally, there's been uh, two companies that have uh, Linux drivers. They're Digigram and Audio Science. These are brands you've never heard of. That's not a problem. I mean, this is pro pro stuff, broadcast type stuff. And there's a newcomer and also RME. Now I have an RME card, uh, an AIO Pro and the uh, system right now that we're coming through. And I'd like an alternative to RME, mainly because the card I have, the guy who was uh, responsible for developing the driver passed away and nobody's picked that up and it's been a couple of years. Aww. And I'm like, I would like a um, option B or maybe, you know, because RME's never had official Linux support, but they've been good. You know, if you come to RME and you knock on their door and you're like, hey, man, can I take a look at the drivers and see how they work? And like, here, sign this NDA and figure it out. And they've been doing that since the 90s. Right across these guys. This is over on Interfacing Linux. It's in the forums. There's an also driver for a company called Marion, which is kind of neat. Uh, also another German company. And they have um, an also driver for their Clara E. Not terribly interesting for a lot of us. Nice. Why is it not terribly interesting? Because it's Dante. You probably don't even know what Dante is. And again, I forget. If you think about it, it's like Nutjack, but like eight times the price and it's proprietary. Um, but they got a card and a driver for it. Open source also driver. And I'm like, okay, well, that, that's fascinating. And I, I, that made me look through their products. And again, this is a relatively new company. They have the Clara B and B Plus, mm. which that that has my attention because that is a lot like the AIO Pro that I have right now. It's got two in, two out for analog. It's got digital. It's got MIDI in and out, balanced XLR connectors, and they even have the DSP built in with a mixer and EQ. I'm like, oh, okay, and a word clock for external. And I'm like, but it doesn't have any Linux drivers. Oh, you know, maybe me. I shot him an email. I'm like, hey guys. How you doing? Hmm. I'm like, do you have any plans on like just rolling out this driver for the other? And they're like, yeah, we're going to get this for the entire product stock eventually. We don't have a <laughs> timeline for it. But, you know, that I take that as a bigger win because they already have a Linux driver and also driver for one of their products. And even on the uh, GitHub page, they're like, this is our foundation. We're going to see if we can keep pushing it out. So I was excited to see that more options for us to play around with or, um, like really professional audio type stuff. So really excited. Now let's go ahead and get into the frameworking, a company where uh, they are not scared to bring up the word Linux. Yeah, absolutely. So the wonderful company Framework Computer has released a new version of their popular Framework 13 inch screen laptop. The new Framework Laptop 13 with Intel Core Ultra Series 1 processors. And this awesome company and the modular, sustainable, repairable, and upgradable Framework Laptop 13 has several new features available. And these are, these are, this is a big deal, including the new Intel Meteor Lake Core Ultra processors with Intel Arc dedicated GPUs, which also supports up to 96 gigabytes of DDR5 memory. Sweet. There's a new 13.5 inch matte finish display with a higher 2880 by 1920 resolution and 120 hertz refresh rate. And it has variable refresh rate support and dun, 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 better Linux support with the 2880 by 1920 resolution with a two to one display scaling. And for as Linux users, a special treat, a super key option in the place of the Windows logo when configuring an English international keyboard. And what's cool is pre-orders are available now, starting at $1,099 for the pre-built and $899 for the DIY edition, with shipments starting this August. The biggest <laughs> takeaway from this is there's not one, but four colors to colors. choose from. Yes. <laughs> For the expansion slots. There was yeah. like Intel, all right, whatever. Oh, look, <laughs> colors. Yes. <laughs> SD expansion card. Uh, yeah. Uh, so that's neat. That's neat. Uh, that's playful. I like seeing stuff like that. Framework has uh, been doing a good mm -hmm. so far. And uh, yeah, they bring up Linux several times in this announcement, you know, because you know, they, they know that we yeah. like stuff like this. We like uh, mm -hmm. the sustainability, the reusability of it, being able to take that motherboard. Yeah. Making another project with it. Oh, really. You can even make a Steam Deck with it. Yeah. <laughs> it's you awesome. can, and it's going to be interesting to play around with, you know, the new Intel uh, APUs. 
see what they do, see what we can get up to. So yeah. good work. And they're reasonably priced too. Like very, oh, very reasonably. Very reasonably. Priced. I mean, honestly, Van, you would think, you know, when we initially started talking about framework, uh, computer, when they first uh, started as a company, you know, I was I was expecting to hear like numbers like two thousand, three thousand mm-hmm. dollars for these systems. I know. And no, they're under two thousand dollars. In fact, under a thousand. Eight ninety nine, <laughs> if you don't mind sticking yeah. them together. And like this is stuff yeah. like Legos, easy to stick together. And the reason a lot of us were thinking they were going to be two, three thousand dollars, because like Dell, HP, all the other manufacturers mm-hmm. just said, dude, we'd love to make a modular laptop, but it would be five thousand dollars to yeah, make exactly. one. Exactly. Yeah. Like, we just that's a, and framework that's looked excuse, at it. Yeah, no, a, a bunch of kids get together and some people and they're like, "All right, let me, oh, yeah, it's going to be like a grand. Yeah, it's going to be. Yeah, we can make it thin too, on top of everything else." These guys were just yeah. blowing smoke because they like gluing everything together because they can get a little bit more profit out of it. Do a new framework. Yeah. Keep up the job. Um, what do we got up next? Ooh, Ooh something exciting. Ben has been playing with. <laughs> Act now. <laughs> For the low, low price of $100. I'm, this, is, this is something I need to drive home to everybody if you're listening to this right now. Mm-hmm. Seriously. Now, while we're talking about the HP Elite Desk 705 G4 Mini. Inside this little box is a Ryzen 5 2400G. All right. You can get one for like 100 bucks right now. For $100. Mm-hmm. That means... Uh, it's ten dollars less than if you just bought a twenty four hundred G CPU by itself. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Let that sink into your head right now. These things are artificially cheap right now, and that's just one of the things that makes this like a very special thing. Four cores. It's hyper threaded, so eight threads. Vega integrated graphics. The one I got for one hundred and twenty bucks was like eight gigs of RAM. It came with an NVMe, two hundred and fifty gig NVMe. Good. Now, a lot of people have hit me up because I just ask in the video, I'm like, hey, why are these things so cheap? I've had more than one person say it's Windows 11 that their company are just dumping these. And it was from two different people at two different companies. They're tossing them out. That means the market is just flooded with them. And Mm -hmm. four years ago, this box was going to run you $700 for the base model. Yeah. I want you to think about that. 700 bucks for the base model. And, you know, typically even like a year ago before this flood kicked in, these things, uh, you know, the price is really about 280, 300 bucks in this configuration used. That's what you're looking at. So why well, I say act now, because the second a home lab media center, retro gaming YouTuber makes a video about these, they're gone. They're going to disappear. You're yes. not going to be able to get them. <laughs> and that price is going to go back up. To where it was, you're just going to be paying 280 to 300 bucks. Look at that, putting Linux on it, not 5.2, but all right. <laughs> um, pretty good piece of kit. Pretty good. There's an entire write up over an interfacing Linux. I walk through all the fun things. I got nice pictures of like, yeah, this is what it looks like on the inside. This is how you get to the RAM. This is how you get to the fan. This is how you get to your NVMe drive. You got to replace the fan. The fan's going to die. The older versions of the Elite Desk, the fan used to cut off. These don't. That fan runs 24-7. And if you know anything about fans, fans die. When these little fans die, they don't quit spinning. They keep happily spinning, but they make ungodly noises. <laughs> and you're like, oh no. And if you got one of these set up as a media center, or if you got it doing whatever task, you're not going to want to live with that. <laughs> so I've tracked down um, everything. You know, this, this is just me, me, and me, man. Here's your part numbers for the RAM, the Everything you need, the fan part numbers, uh, links to it on Amazon. Link uh, at the bottom of the article to the Amazon vendor that I bought one from, which I will say came very professionally wrapped with a return card and any problems like that. But I had questions about stuff like this. Like, how much power did these things actually draw? At idle, it's not too bad, man. Uh, Let me see. What did we get? About 12 watts at idle. Considering it's a four core, eight thread full size x86 2400g and at full tilt 42 watts so that's your electron vampirism and you know the fan by itself you shouldn't be able to hear it that's what i say because these things have probably been on if you're getting them used like you are you shouldn't be able to hear it at all like 36 dba um just running at idle and 50 at full tilt which eh, it's a little bit shouty 
Of course, it plays 4K video. Can you use this as a digital audio workstation? Absolutely, you can. I tested it and with a real DAW session. I ran Geekbench on it just because I wanted to see how long it would take for a YouTube comment to show up and be like, Geekbench isn't a real bit. I'm like, I know, but it's numbers. Let's play with it. And uh, the whole point of all the benchmarks that I did is all of these seem to have come configured. It's not one vendor. There's several vendors. There's thousands of these on the market right now on eBay and Amazon. They all have eight gig of memory, which means they have one stick of memory RAM in them. You're only using single channel. Mm -hmm. It's Ryzen. You need to put a second stick in it because it is the cheapest, biggest performance upgrade that you can do for an AMD system, period. And here I'm showing it off, especially with graphics. You know, for Mark, the fuzzy donut that spins around, <laughs> yes, we're talking about like favorites. in single channel, it can barely creak out like 11 FPS. <laughs> that jumps up to yeah. 21. Okay. Like, no, I did gaming benchmarks just to show you. This is not something you really want to try to do like 3D gaming on. It'll crush an 8 any 2D game you throw out at Hollow Knight, you know, your platforming games, all your retro stuff. Because again, it's a 2400G full-size desktop GPU and CPU. But uh, Shadow of the Tomb Raider went from like 22 at 720p to 32, like 10, 10 FPS right there. Just stuck a stick of RAM in it. That's all I did. Same thing with like Dirt. Went from 80 to 112. Um, 120 bucks. If you're thinking about getting one of these, it's about the size of uh, 2.5 Raspberry Pis. Yeah. Now, if you take like Raspberry Pis, <laughs> stick them together, chop another one in half, that's about the footprint. It's actually, you know, a Raspberry Pi in a case. You know, of course, it's a little bit bigger. It's heavy. It's got an external power brick, but uh, this is what I ended up buying instead of Raspberry Pi 5. Mm -hmm. It is because it's nice. just more. Yeah. It does more yeah. and it costs <laughs> less because after you get the Pi, you get a case, you get a cooler, you get a uh, external power, you know, your power yeah. connector. You're uh, about $11 more than I ended up paying for this. Oh, if you are like me, I, there's a performance metric in the video. You'll have to go watch the video if you want me to, because I don't want to say it out loud. It's called PPPITA, and it's a very important metric for this HP Elite desk. So if you're looking for doing this, uh, yeah, go grab one. If not, uh, don't get angry in like a month or two when you're like, yeah, I'm going to get one of these, and you're doing it, and they're $300 again. Yeah, 300 that's what the yeah. street price. <laughs> this, is, this is a temporary dip. If you just happen to be in the market for one, go ahead and grab one. I don't care where you get it from. I got an Amazon affiliate link on the page. If you want to do that, help out old man Vin. Go for it. If not, have fun with. Like I said, they're on eBay too. Now, uh, and everything works with Linux out of the box. All the sound works. All the Wi-Fi. It's Intel Wi-Fi chipset. Like it's hundred percent. There's no hiccups. Debian twelve installs out of the box on these things, people. If yeah. Debian twelve just runs out of the box, everything should run out of the box. Good to go. Oh, <laughs> yay! Well, then <laughs> guess what I have here. But because of old man Vin. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I went ahead and, and uh bought one a few weeks ago and uh um I grabbed the nearest USB flash drive with Linux on it and installed it and it's it is ticking along just fine with Linux Mint twenty one point three and I even bought an extra fan for it because uh it was a Ven recommendation and I think it was a smart one. <laughs> And I was able to play one of my favorite games, Stray, at 720p, uh, 50 frames per second on it. So, yeah, it can play games. It can <laughs> play really games. Nice. And, you know, it's a 2400G <laughs> Vega, like, you know, realistic, you know, like it's, but, but there is option B, though. There is an option B because these things were kitted out with like, you know, the extra option, you know, like when you go to yeah. buy a car, there's always that like crazy <laughs> option. It's like, oh, do you, do you want the spoiler with flamethrowers on the back? And I'm like, what? That's an option that I don't think many people sprung for. There was an option to put in this case, a discrete mm -hmm. GPU. Yeah, I saw that. <laughs> that yeah. is an option that you got to pop that guy in, but you got to get rid of your power brick because 65 watt power brick, all of a sudden you need a minimum 150 watt power brick. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> maybe we'll play around with that in the future. Maybe not. It depends on how this video does, uh, what type of interest. If you want, go check it out on Interfacing Linux. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Give it a subscribe to the channel if you want. If not, that's cool. I'm not your boss. All right. Mm -hmm. Coming up next graphic design. We're going to keep this Debian train 
<laughs> yes. Rolling <laughs> Because we all know Debian 12 is absolutely, positively, without question, the best distribution created in the history of ever. Don't we? <laughs> absolutely, we all it do. It's one of the best. It's my Period. favorite as well. <laughs> That's why it's, it, it's got so many Debian babies running out there, like the Ubuntu's and the Mints. They're all Debian-based, and all for good reason. Now, it turns out I'm not the only one aware of this. A gentleman by the name of David did a nice little write-up on how he does arts professionally using Debian 12. Now, he was originally using um, Fedorf, a.k.a. Fedora, the KDE spin, but he ended up having to nope it recently due to what he calls regressions. And what are those regressions? Well, there's three of them. Wayland, Wayland, and Wayland. Yes, uh, several things, because he has professional things that do professional stuff, like professional tablets, like Wacom tablets, and he needs to configure them very professionally. And a universal command line interface that's called X at Wacom doesn't work anymore, not with Wayland. And to make that work with Wayland, each desktop manager is going to have to come up with their own config utility. And the same goes for color management utilities. Yes, spiders that you got to drop on your monitor to get your color calibration correct so it prints out right mm -hmm. and your deliverables are all right. None of that works right under Wayland just yet. Krita. That's where he spends his time. Good to see. I love people that got a lot of love for Krita. It runs like butt on Wayland, and it's buggy. And you might have guessed it has issues with color management on Wayland, which is unfortunate. Then David goes on to explain how he configures his desktop for, for you know professional uh, pixel manipulation. It's pretty neat. And uh, don't worry, his uh, setup's way less psychotic than the ones that I use uh, for professional audio on Debian. And you know it's it's good to see this because he closes this out with a um, same thing same thing I do. I have nothing against Wayland. I hope Wayland works out. But you gotta you, you can't just say everything works, hop over to it, because maybe a niche uh, bit of us trying to do some, you know, actual pro level work under Linux are like our tools don't work yet. Hopefully they will. And he brings that up. You know, I don't have any hate for Wayland. David doesn't have any hate for Wayland, but uh, it's not really serviceable right now compared to X11. So you're wondering why X11 is still kicking around? This is a good example to drag out. You know, I spend my time in Reaper, DaVinci Resolve, OBS, and GIMP. That means, like, I'm not messing around with Wayland, and I'm not messing around with Pipewire. Because it's just like trying, you know, what about X Wayland? I'm like, why do I run or want to run my X11 app with a bunch of extra steps thrown into what advantage? So this was a good read, especially for somebody who does the arting. Oh, look, I got one Yay. of those little guys. He'll plop yeah. it on the monitor. And again, if you're looking at that and you're like, what is that? Don't worry about it. That's display cal. And <laughs> that's a piece of software I got to have, man. And uh, yeah. So I, I would take his setup even further because uh, David is a fan of uh, KDE. And I'm like, you know, we'll just get rid of KDE and install XFC. That way you don't have to worry about uh, the pipe wires and all the other stuff. So, uh, yeah, it's good to see this work. Uh, and there's all of his arts. Pretty neat. I'll put yeah. a link in the show notes and go check this out. Here's something I've never played around with. Um, Fontforge, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. <laughs> I have played around with that a bit. <laughs> oh, this is a uh, yeah checklist of like stuff. And, you know, at the end of the day, this is what a workstation is. You know, it is something that has been set up for a particular task. You know, it's not a general purpose desktop PC. You know, I have two workstations in here. I have a digital audio workstation. This thing is configured to do one thing. And I got Threadbooper. It's more multi-purpose, but it's set up to, you know, run the show and outside of that. So he has a very valuable guide for setting this up for, you know, if you want to like, Maybe consider getting into Linux, uh, experimenting with Linux, mm -hmm. but you want to keep your thousands of thousands of dollars worth of equipment up and working. Yeah. There you go. And David, I like your kitty workstation at your desk as well. <laughs> yeah, it has a cute little pet, pet kitty cat there next to his uh, workstation and it has its own bed. It's so cute. <laughs> I love kitty. Nice. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> that's going to do it. For this week, thanks for coming and hanging out with us. We do this live every uh, Wednesday at 3 p.m. Eastern right here on Twitch. Uh, you can probably figure out the URL. It ends with Linux Gamecast. Get some notifications for that. Uh, we do have a YouTube channel. Some people watch that. That's Linux Gamecast. WebZone, LinuxGamecast.com. 
Got a support button over there if you want to make us uh, dollar, dollar airs. Dollar airs? Yeah, 10, 100 airs <laughs> Dollary maybe. dues? Yeah, a couple of dollary <laughs> dues or something like that. If you want to become a patron, we got a bunch of bonus stuff we throw your way. Like the live and uncut version of this. If you can't make the live show, but you want that live experience, I'll put it in podcast format and video for you. And of course, an ad-free um, hand-tailored and rendered version of the show. That's not on YouTube. If you turn like, I don't want to deal with YouTube and I don't want to deal with any voice hogs, we'll have that up for download on uh, patreon.com forward slash Linux Game Guys. Do thank you for your support. And uh, that's going to wrap it up for this week. And come check out more things over at, uh, on our Twitch channel. Jordan will be streaming tomorrow and we'll be doing Trackmania mm-hmm. on uh, Friday because we're doing the Summer of Speed 2008 edition. Everything's full speed for summer because it's officially summer now. <laughs> And we're going to be rocking and rolling in that. So get your practice in. And come hop in to our super secret uh, ultra hidden discord by linking your Twitch account or Patreon account. And that's where we'll be at the other six days of the week, Joe Bright. Yeah. All sure right. Will. Time <laughs> for credit music. Time to thank our wonderful And to press patrons. a credit button. Give me them credits. <laughs> Click. Yay. Thank you to our advisors, Omegas and Artharon. And our executive producers, Barbant, Scott M, Atomic, Mike G, uh, our Chicago Kicks People level, Super Dust Out, Empty, Blasphemia, King Boige, <laughs> our Sea Monsters, Hakeem, David, Darkwing, System T, Mark, DS, and Joe, <laughs> our Death Notes, Dirty Dean, Back, Dodger, Rue, Turnover, <laughs> and our Chairlings, Christopher Nubbin. Oh, that's it. Just two of you guys. We need more. Come on, yeah. make it rain. All right, <laughs> we have everybody. so many awesome patrons. I can't say their names every week. <laughs> get out there. Get up something. We'll see you next week. Bye bye. Bye, you all. <laughs> <laughs>